gallery to, to celebrate that anniversary. And um, our original idea was to, what should we do? Well, we'll approach our most um, famous RA at the time, and we're talking a couple of years ago, um, we asked um, Fred Cumin to um, have an exhibition here. And um, it was not quite as straightforward as we started out um, with that, because um, the simple fact was that um, uh, Fred um, was quite happy to support the exhibition, but he he um, he wanted to include um, some of his um, compatriots <laughs> and um, who 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 he'd worked with over the years, and um, so uh, that meant um, involving other RAs um, and two specifically that were very close to Fred, um, Nick Rooney and Gus Cummings. Um, who uh, Fred taught. Um, and I think um, it's a very good link up that with Rye because um, it goes right back to the 80s and, and actually even before that uh, when um, uh, Fred Kuhlman started coming into the gallery and um, talking to the then uh, curator of, of the gallery and um, the trust that ran the gallery, and particularly a guy called John Andrews. And um, I think he was a great kind of networker in terms of bringing people in. He liked to involve people, Frank. And um, so it would be Mick come down to Rye, you know, come and have a look at Rye Art Gallery, we've got gallery, get your work in there, you know, and Gus, the same sort of thing. And there was this London shift, it was one of the first shifts down to the sort of Hastings coast, when Gus settled up on the West Coast, <coughs> um, and Mick came down slightly later, and um, it was in St Leonard's. Um, so it's a great kind of Sussex story of friendship and painting, and well everything else basically i think it also footnotes the most incredible sort of tribute at the ra magazine by norman Ackroyd, um who recently wrote about fred and said that he was you know the most amazing individual he brought all all the artists in to his you know his circle because he knew how talented they were and that article mm. by Norman Ackwood in the current RA yeah. magazine is, is it's so indicative of Fred's personality and, and how important he he thought that other artists you know were in his sphere and needed to be brought into that world. Mm. Yeah, the relationships with the gallery have, have you know they've gone on over the period of years, but I mean um, uh, the, uh, um, many people have told me the story of uh, actually when we ever had a problem here, um, in, the, in the sort of uh, late 70s and 80s, um, <coughs> the, the trust would contact Fred and say, we better have an exhibition, because <laughs> we need to sell a few paintings, you know, short of money. And, um, you know, he, he always obliged, actually, and, and supported, and always came out and supported uh, things like uh, the gallery, but also the RSA, and we'd connect the local connections here. Um, so we, we've started in this room, and um, uh, it's a really interesting selection that we've put together of um, one other artist that I haven't mentioned, who was um, at Edgerton painting um, in the late 70s, uh, Jackie Stanley. Yeah, where the story starts is they were both at the Royal College of Art together, and they were taught by the same tutors. Um, they were also in London at a particular time in London's history where it wasn't particularly pleasant. It was very smoggy, very polluted, quite dark. And um, Jackie had, um, she sort of recently married and moved to Edgerton in Kent, 
with her, your very young family. Her daughter, who was two, was suffering from TB, and so was her husband. So after their isolation period, they moved to Edgerton, which was an artist commune, and Fred closely followed. But I think what really comes out as soon as they move to Edgerton is the colour. <laughs> so from smoggy London <laughs> comes this, you know, palette which you could never imagine. So these portraits, so these landscapes by Jackie are, they're, they're painted out in the open air in Edgerton. And the palette, when you'll see it later with uh, Jackie's early work, changes completely. It's very dark London scenes, but these are very bright. But what sort of really speaks with Fred and Jackie's work is, is the love of landscape and love of colour. And there's a, is, there's a familiarity with each other's work. So we wanted to place them together so that you know, people could familiarise themselves with that. And then obviously, we've, if you move, you've got sort of later Fred's work, but also mix. So we did, um, when we were asked to sort of incorporate um, Mick and Gus, we did sort of deliberate quite wildly on how you would incorporate <laughs> Mick Rooney and Gus Cummings' work. Yeah. And it does slowly come together. And with Mick, Mick's work, his, um, his colour palette and Fred's landscape colour palette really complement each other. I mean, obviously, you've got the sort of the moonscapes too. But you've, 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 got, you've got that. They're so different in subject matter, but in coloration, which you wouldn't believe when you kind of look at it on the computer screen would work. But once you get the work in here, you can really get that sense. So Mick was taught by um, Fred, and um, he described Fred as, God, how did he describe Fred to you? He, he well, said, um, I think as a teacher, um, he he basically allowed Mick to kind of build up his own narrative stories um, for painting. And I mean, this is just a brilliant sort of example of um, what's going on in Mick, Mick Rooney's head, actually. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, the story was, it, it's meant to be an environmental story, the planet's dying. Um, but in actual fact, um, who, who will come to help us? You know, will the animals come to help us? Uh, will they all get together to try and save the planet? Um, but um, it, 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 it's just incredibly complex mm -hmm. in terms of the story that he's trying to tell uh, with these figures. Um, in turn, um, if you think about Fred's moonscape over Camber, this painting here. Um, Mick Rooney liked to describe that in a particular way, and he, he basically said they, they were like haikus, very mini minimalistic symbols um, in, in those paintings, um, which I thought was a terrific analogy, actually, because there's so much depth in them. Um, that you don't immediately recognise, but over time uh, becomes very, very evident when you look at them. It's the stories within the landscape for Fred. He sat for many hours painting the outdoors, and the story develops, you know, through that, as an observer of the sky, going through that emotion of the, that tale. Mm. There's a similarity, there is a narrative which isn't obvious at first glance, but yeah. yeah. So, again, we've got a combination of all the art, uh, of, of three of the artists here. Um, we're very lucky to have um, a portrait done by Fred Kierman of um, Professor Stephen Hawking. Um, there, there are two, I think, I'm right in saying one of them is it now at, actually at the Portrait Gallery. Um, and I think it's um, wonderful to see, because I think not a lot of people um, associate Fred Kuhnin with portraits. So that's why we particularly wanted to show actually 
how good he was <laughs> at portraits. Um, uh, but the other thing about it is it's also, it's like a landscape painting of a, of a person, which is, I, I find, quite remarkable. Um, these three big uh, portraits, um, I'd like to start with the Mick Rooney on the left, which is called Just Landed. And um, it re relates to Primo Nevi, um, uh, who wrote the book about the survivor of Auschwitz. And um, you can see again, Mick's sort of mind has floated into, uh, uh, you know, where, where will they end up? And there they are on a kind of meteorite with their belongings. <coughs> and um, it's a sort of monumental piece, really. But, um, um, I, I just think it looks very fine and uh, uh, tells so many different stories. Um, the piece in the middle, um, and this is Mick Rooney in 1970, <laughs> um, but the painting is by Gus Cummings. And um, it really is a monumental effort, this, and um, I, I can't, it's just a sort of force as a painting if you look at it. It's just incredible. And um, I think the history is quite important here, where it kicks in, um, because we're not we're talking about artists that have had a career of over 50 years or more. Um, now, now, Gus painted this around 1970, and um, the year before, we put, or not we, but somebody put a man on the moon. And um, I think it's an incredibly sort of optimistic time where people actually did feel that everything was possible. And um, Gus has created this incredible painting of, you know, called Space Boot, basically, of the spaceman's boot coming and landing, uh, like you wait, like on the television when you saw it all happening in 1969. But in the foreground, um, you've got Mick Rooney sitting there you know, rolling up a fag, wearing his baseball jacket, um, bought in Italy. And um, I, I just think it's a, a great kind of pop art piece, um, but so reflective of a kind of optimism of, of, of the late 60s, early 70s, in that, you know, we can do anything, actually. We can, we can do anything, we can put a man on the moon. I think because it's a wedding present for Nick, yeah. Well, yeah, it's very important. That. <laughs> <laughs> that he, um, it's got it's got Gus's elements of that real observational, you know, sort of the boot. You know, I mean, uh, as far as I can work out, there's photographs of space men and a big hit. Gus has probably looked at someone stepping in a space boot and gone, "Oh my God, that's huge!" <laughs> it's so observational. And I just think he's he's put all those elements into the world that. Obviously, they're both living in because they're very close friends. They went to school together. They they manoeuvred through art school together. They were really close, and still are to this day. So he's 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 putting those sort of elements that you know you're living in in this world, pop art. But also, you start to get Gus's you know real structural elements in his in, in his paintings, which are you know really coming out in in the 1970s. Mm. That's early for seeing those sort of pieces for Gus. Um, it looks absolutely like Mick Rooney. <laughs> I have to say, you know, you walk through the gallery and no one's here, and you're like, Ooh. <laughs> yeah, he he is. It's a great a image. Fantastic painting. Yeah, he he really is. So it's very realistic. Um, we we obviously put this piece here because it's got pop art elements with Jackie's pop art yeah. elements. So we thought these two spoke to each other. So these are shot. Shot, well, fronts, shot scenes. So Jackie's um, early work did sort of reflect um, sort of London scenes, urban scenes, and these are a little bit later, sort of going into the 60s, and they're very sort of pop art. You get the pop art, sort of the star at the back, which is very sort of Peter Blake. You can see that in the back of the market store. So we thought, obviously, these two were speaking to each other because actually Jackie. Has, has never met Mick before. No. So um, um, Jackie was obviously at the Royal College of Art with, with Fred, but because um, Gus and Mick 
were taught a little bit later. Jackie had never met them before. Mm. But they obviously had had the same tutors. But I also, think this is what we'll see later on. In these the are at the same time, they're 69, 70s, yeah, they're they 70s. Um, and she's using kind of translucent paints as well, which is quite quite interesting, and um, some of the imagery in it. Um, what we when, when when I first saw these, of course, what I also picked up on was um, um, Fred's son. Yeah, um, yeah. That's and I thought, wow, this is incredible. Um, you know, we we had a show for Danny here um, earlier on in the year. And um, so much of his work um, focused on his shop fronts and things Very that were going. He liked to paint them. And in fact, usually, I think he used to say, you know, I'll paint it and then it'll be closed the next week or whatever. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, he's trying to capture, capture venues and shop fronts. And um, we've, we've actually put some of Dan Danny's work in this exhibition because it seemed to fit so well um, with uh, particularly Jackie. And, and, and then when we discovered that they kind of, you know, were at Edgerton together, and um, that, that Jackie was sometimes looking after Danny. We, we, you know, there, it's there, there was definitely an influence. So, so. Um, we've obviously got these very beautiful and um, a, a very kind of popular um, composition for Fred uh, Rye Harbour, um, and what he does so brilliantly is. Um, you get this uh, counterpoint between what are sort of slightly industrial objects uh, with nature um, and um, I think from a painter's perspective um, we've had a lot of artists in here actually and they look at this painting and I think what they realise is he's absolutely uh, the master of being a colourist and um, he works with these colours like Nobody else actually. It's absolutely wonderful painting. I, th I think also um, because of obviously looking at the history of all the artists, they were taught by Carol Wade, Ruskin Spirit, Royal College of Art tutors. And what you can see, in particularly in this one, is how good Fred was at you know, that sort of perspective. Perspective. <laughs> it's yeah. just like. Someone would taught me how to do perspective like that. I'd be very happy. <laughs> but yeah, you can. I think you can see as we move through the gallery, you'll really get the sense of how well they were taught. And I think the, the, this piece particularly, you'll see with because obviously we know for his loving landscapes and his beauty and harmony. But having this structure here resonates with what goes on in the room. That's yeah. what we're just about to go through. 